Well, look, as I said earlier, it is clear that politicians have run out of political capital on this question of freedom. Never again will we allow ourselves to be told that we can't sit on a park bench, that we can't go for a swim, that we can't even go outside, or as one public health official told us, we couldn't even talk. I think the public are now awake. But the fight is not over. When Dominic Perrottet says that freedom is not a gift from government, it is our birthright, it's what our soldiers fought and died for, what follows is that never again must we allow politicians to intimidate us, fill us with alarmism, thrive on hysteria and have a nation virtually cower in fear. The Prime Minister made an interesting speech this week, promising to give Australians their freedom back and get big government out of our lives. It's going to be hard for him to be believed because he stood by, silent, while his unconstitutional National Cabinet, bit by bit, stripped our freedoms away. Now he's saying that the prominence of government during the COVID crisis was, quote, not some new norm, it has a used-by date. He also said that governments empower people to make and pursue their choices. Yet in the country of which he is the leader, there are people today who have pursued their choice not to be vaccinated and they've lost their jobs. And he remains silent. Yet he talked in the speech this week at the Sydney Institute about economic opportunity and reward for hard work. Why then are almost a million people not working on welfare? when employers have thousands and thousands of job vacancies. He spoke about, quote, the best traditions of liberal democracy, unquote, but they've been trashed over a virus that infected fewer than 1% of the population. These draconian measures were never taken during the war or the Spanish flu, but now the Prime Minister is saying that it's not normal for governments to tell people, quote, where we can and can't go, who we can and can't invite into our homes, to stay home, to close our businesses, unquote. What kind of double standard is this? He presided over these very limitations to our freedom. Indeed, in the whole Australian political world, only Dominic Perrottet has spoken out against these limitations on our freedom. Now he is saying it's time for government, the Prime Minister is, to quote, to step back and let Australians step forward. Hmm. Too bad if the same Australians lost their businesses, lost their jobs, lost their mental well-being, lost their dignity, and now find themselves stepping into a giant abyss. But the Prime Minister also touched on the promise to get government out of our lives. But staggering sums of money have been spent by his government, such that debt will be part of our life and the lives of the next generation for years to come. Let's face it, coalition governments have been in power for about 75% of the time since World War II. The promise to get government out of our lives simply can't be believed. I mean, if you look at the figures, Government regularly boasts how many laws they pass. When the Gillard government passed 533 Acts of Parliament, that qualified her as Australia's most productive Prime Minister. That must rank our first parliamentarians as complete failures because it took over eight years for our first parliamentarians to pass enough laws to match the 206 Acts that our national politicians were able to pass in one year, 215. We are a country which might be a democracy, but it's run by bureaucrats. Listen to this, sit down or you'll faint. At last count, we've got about 42 ministers and assistant ministers, this is federal, 42 ministers and assistant ministers. So 20% of the federal parliament and 48% of the coalition party room are part of the executive. And Scott Morrison talks about getting government out of our lives. The Australian Government Directory lists 188 government departments and agencies and 148,736 federal public servants, as in December 2020. Australia-wide, the Australian Bureau of Statistics report argues there are over 2 million public sector employees at the end of June 2020. 1,000... 1, 1,000,000... Sorry, 1,609,100 at the state government level. None of them lost a cent during coronavirus while they dished out dictatorial edicts to battling Australians in the last 17 months. In the last 10 years, state governments have added almost another 200,000 public sector employees. All of these people are directing our lives in some way and almost at every turn diminishing our freedom. As government grows, freedom contracts. Prime Minister, you see, he's reciting these platitudes that we heard from you this week. Perhaps you should read President Ronald Reagan's farewell address to the nation in 1989, when he said, and I quote, 
I hope we once again have reminded people that man is not free unless government is limited. He said, there's a clear cause and effect here that is as neat and predictable as a law of physics. As government expands, liberty contracts. Ronald Reagan. One further point can be made, which is exhibited in every news poll. While the government has been expanding, our trust in government has been diminishing. That is the crisis that all leaders face coming into the next election. Our men and women fought for freedom and gave their lives. People today are marching for freedom. Governments merely talk about it in order to secure your vote. I think you need to think twice.